make you feel brand new. These frights will inspire you. You know, I made a video on Ghoul's Rule that Mattel also copyright claimed and it was an incredibly successful video, and so that sucks. But you know what else was heavily recommended to me? Boo York. Boo York is supposed to be a musical, which I just love, because that means I gotta just genuinely get, generally give an idea of the songs because I can't play any of the songs. I will admit, after covering more of the G3 stuff, I really miss the Gen 1 Monster High. There's just more, more to it all. So this is Caddy, and she's struggling to write her own special love song. She's got strong writer's block, and we get our first real musical number. Slow, somber, sad, introspective, and isn't Caddy supposed to have a tail? What's going on? I'm just going to assume it's hidden under her skirt or something. Anyway, A plus song, so strong start. We got the mummy sisters needing to go to Boo York since there's a star of some sort of importance. The comet crystal is apparently the quote, most important Egyptian artifact. I'm just surprised it's in Boo York and not in Britain land. They, they like, I've, I thought they took stuff, a lot of stuff from the Egyptians. Wear Cleo and Deuce and nothing changes that. Except for a reboot. Caddy wants to go to Boo York also so that she can <laughs> find her music living in the big city dream. Even though she's already famous, I guess this is more like backpacking across Europe for her. We got a song montage of them living it up in the big city. New outfits, urban fashion. The song is very montage. It's okay. I, I wouldn't put it on my iPod. I'm, I'm gonna give it a C. For those who live in big cities, what's it like watching these movies now? For people who grow up in like the suburbs or the country, I mean, they get it. Those places are usually really boring. But if you've lived in the city, I have to imagine the mystique of living it up in the city is gone. Like that, that's gotta fade away fast, especially like if you're in America where the cities are very gray and gray. Does that affect your ability to watch these sorts of shows and movies? Leave, you, leave your response in the comment section below. I'm, I'm actually really curious. Moth character, yes! Hi there. I'm here to interrupt this video to tell you that, uh, I'm not making any money off of it. Mattel copyright claimed it over 10 times. I have been fighting this copyright for a little while now, re revising and re-editing this video multiple, multiple times. And I'm pretty sure I'm at a point now where Mattel doesn't care. They just don't want anyone talking about classic Monster High. They have no problem with me talking about new Monster High. So if that's the case, Mattel, you win, fine. I won't talk about classic Monster High anymore unless I make it specifically for Patreons. Patreons, patrons on my Patreon, which if you're so kind and are watching this video and like it, maybe you can support me on Patreon because again, I'm not getting any ad revenue on this video or watch, watch another one of my videos after this one. That's also nice. As you can clearly tell, my setup changed. In the time I've been debating and fighting the copyrights for this video, I've moved out, I have gotten surgery, and now we have a foster kitten. I'm a little upset, so I decided to just release it and let you guys enjoy it. Just say, screw it, let, let's, just, let's just release it to the public, have Mattel win one. They were nice enough not to copyright claim my Ever After High deep dives. So with that being said, look forward to exclusively only the brand new Monster High content on this channel, because nothing else is permitted. Thanks, links are in the description for my Patreon. On with the video. Moths are underrated. Luna Matthews, amazing name, is from Joyzy, and she wants to be on Broadway. Oh, also Torelai is here. Nefra invited her. So now we got two bad girls ready to get down and dirty. Though I'd think Vegas is a better place for getting down and dirty. We're gonna see the debut of a lot of characters in Boo York, like LED. I'm only going to focus on characters that pop out to me, otherwise we'll be here all day. Golia, back at Monster High, notices something about that special falling star. That being that it's headed straight for Earth. You can fix it, right? Listen, Abby. Gulia is a monster of many talents, but I think she'd need a missile or something to knock that thing from away from Earth. I think she's just lacking resources. The Ptolemy family is the most powerful family in Boo York, and they're hosting the museum exhibit. Sup, Miss Ptolemy? 
Bro, I want to know what song Deuce is listening to. It sounds like it's actually really good. Is that going to appear later in this movie? It's not at all subtle that Nefra's dad is planning on arranging a marriage with Seth, the Prince of Boo York. So here's the plan. The little shard of the comet that's at the exhibit is magic, apparently. When the bigger piece is flying in the sky, any promise made in front of the shard makes the promise magically unbreakable. And he's telling Nefra, hey, you want money and power? All you gotta do is marry some rando. And Nefra isn't super jazzed about that, and she immediately tries to pawn the responsibility off on Cleo because of course she does. And we get the next song, Nefra singing about being cool and powerful. I mean, I like empowering songs, especially sang by strong female leads, so it immediately gets a boost due to personal bias, but it's just, it's lacking some pizzazz. Like, I feel like it needs more energy, maybe like a faster BPM. I'll give it like a B. I've just gotta get Deuce out of the picture first. Let me guess, Cleo will feel obligated to uphold her family's potential, but ultimately jump back to Deuce because that's where she truly belongs. We've seen this a few times. Uh, please, just let, let there be a little twist to this. It'd be funny if Seth takes off his headpiece and he's actually like super hot and Nefra does a full 180 and is like, oh, nope. I'm sorry, I wanna marry him now. I'm also betting on that actually happening. I'm gonna keep score of how many things I predict and how many things I get right. I think it's funny how the most powerful quote unquote Egyptian family is named after a Greek ruler of Egypt during the later history of ancient Egypt when they were being taken over by the dominant Roman Empire, which could signify that the marriage between the Denial family and the Ptolemy family is really the Denial family forfeiting their heritage but I may also just be reading too much into this. Anyway, Nefra is going out of her way to make Deuce look bad, so Cleo breaks up with him. Wait, that can't be the case, because Deuce is based off of a Greek myth monster. If Cleo's father was okay with merging Egyptian and Greco-Roman culture, he would have been fine with Deuce. Oh wait, no, he's he doesn't like Deuce because he's a dude, bro. It's not because of his background. Okay, never mind. Well, my theory is still viable. I'm sorry, I like learning about Greek and Egyptian mythology. I wonder why, Rick Riordan. Thank you for making such amazing books and making learning fun. If you love her, you'll leave her. No! If you love her, you would fight for her. So they just randomly stumble across Pharaoh, a street rapper performer, and I'm pretty sure this is what Deuce was listening to. Or it's close enough. And now there's two super famous people together, and now they gotta run. Classic. Oh gosh, is this perhaps a new budding relationship? Oh my goodness, he's a rapper because he's a mummy and he raps and he's wrapped up. That's so bad, it's good. Speaking of relationships, Deuce breaks up with Cleo and we have another song. Oh my goodness. But this one lasts for an actual song length and it's very clear the singers aren't even close to the voice actors. I get it, whatever. Anyway, it's very much like a Backstreet Boys sort of breakup song and it, you know, it's kind of good. Why is the slower sad songs better than the happy songs? Well, this gets an A from me. Your friends don't like music? They only like the oldies. From when, like, Tut was young? <laughs> actually, Tut was always young. <laughs> oh, wait, that joke is actually pretty morbid now that I think about it. You know, whenever they make a movie about going to the city, they like to focus on the glitz and glam, but the city is usually really gross. Like, 90% of it, at least in America. The nightlife has glitz and glam, but it helps when you're wasted and everyone is 30% hotter and the dark hides all the stains. So the comet has a person inside it. Turns out it's actually a ship and they just gotta wake her up so the city doesn't get destroyed. Oh my God, the comet is a spaceship because they're ripping on the conspiracy theorists who think that aliens visited, visited the ancient Egyptians. This movie is great. They're tying in a bunch of things. Also, where is Torali? She kind of just disappeared. Halfway through the movie, we have the gala for the exhibit. Honestly, I wonder where this is actually going to go. I didn't think we'd get here so fast. Nefra tells Cleo about how she should totally promise to marry Seth, and now Cleo is feeling the heat. Also, Seth is apparently really boring. 
We don't actually know anything about him though, other than he writes poetry, and that's not really a red flag. And the best outfit award goes to Luna. Absolutely breathtaking. 10 out of 10. Let me be the first to congratulate the no. happy couple. Plot twist! There it is! <sighs> not what I was expecting, but thank goodness. And I'm not gonna wear this anymore. Oh, double whammy! I really should have seen that coming, but I didn't, so they got me. We got the rap song of the movie, and literally the opening is the same piano intro as Eminem's Lose Yourself. Very on the nose, but if it works, it works. And even Caddy has a little rap to add to the song. This duet is really awesome. A major highlight to the movie. Another A. This movie is killing it. Yeah. Their music. What? what? Where have you been? Nefra just wishes on the comet to take away their love, which I thought you were supposed to promise to the crystal, not wish. Oh, also they can't sing, just so they can really add the symbolism on top of that. So now we're back to square one. Then Torali just takes Caddy's voice so she can sing good. Deuce gets some hot dog stand therapy and decides he made the wrong choice. Torelai getting a show on Broadway in less than a couple hours is incredible. She needs to forget about a singing career and focus on self-marketing. She'd kill it as an agent. And of course, we got a proper high energy song that's catchy and powerful and this is what I was waiting for. Another A. Goodness, this may be my favorite song of this movie. Don't worry, they quickly get Caddy's voice back. Now they just gotta get to Pharaoh and everything will be good. Okay, wait, so how is Cleo supposed to f re realize that she needs to fight to get Deuce back and that Deuce was manipulated? We're running out of time in the movie. Oh, they chose Caddy to be the love interest because Egyptians worshipped cats. Everything was cleverly thought of. Okay, wait, how can Nefra expect Cleo and Pharaoh, or Seth, to get married if the crystal isn't there? Wasn't the crystal supposed to be like an integral part to this entire ritual thing? Like the promise needs to be made in front of the crystal for the promise to be magically set in stone and the crystal's not the- You got the comet! Gulia figures out there's music coming from the comet, which just might be the way to wake up the pilot. Just in the nick of time, they show up to break up the promise. Deuce shows that he's still in love with Cleo and Pharaoh gets his voice back. And this is what you want to do with your voice instead? This is who I am. Hey, you know what they say, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again, just keep making babies until one of them wants exactly what you want. Is that the Triforce? Time to wrap up what's going on with the comet. Gulia sends music signals on full blast. The pilot wakes up and the comet ship stops, saving all of Boo York from total destruction. And oh gosh, could that be another song I hear coming on, but now with an alien robot crystal pop star? W what an amazing coincidence. I love musicals. You get a story and music. How do you not like musicals? The ending is very ending song. You've heard it before. They all sound the same. It gets a C. They're all pretty much just a C. We, we got a rap interlude with Pharaoh and Caddy. Oh, okay, sure. I'll, I'll pop it up to a B. Why not? It's my show, I get to do what I want. Boo York was a great entry for Monster High, a massive highlight for the series that introduced some really fun characters. The songs in Generation 1 were just so good. Was that all sung by the same person? Was, cause they, they sound, they, all the songs sounded like it was one person. Also, sorry I don't currently have, it's probably annoying some of you. I'm sorry I don't currently have the fourth skateboard up there. It's it it's down here. We've been we've been practicing. We've been learning a little bit of skateboarding. What Monster High special should I review next? Leave your recommendations in the comments. They're real. So it is true. I want the crossover between Monster High and Ever After High so bad. They were planning everything and setting it all up. <laughs> Mattel, give us what we want.